in 2003, I had been invited to be the commencement speaker at the University of Portland. That's one of the finest Catholic schools. It's been called the Notre Dame of the West in Portland, Oregon. When I accepted the invitation to speak at that university, the president said in a letter that he was so glad that I could come and, and, and be their commencement speaker. But he said, you need to know that there's going to be a very outstanding graduate in this class. His name is Judas Slavkovsky. His family got the first Habitat House in Sisters, Oregon when he was in fifth grade. And he was raised in that house, and now this year he's graduating. And he's graduating with highest honors. In fact, he's graduating with the highest grade point average in biology of anybody in the university. A little kid had been raised up in one of our houses. So I went out there, of course, obviously excited about the whole experience of, of speaking uh, at the commencement exercises. And, uh, and when I arrived at the university, I went back to a holding area and I was getting the robes put on with the president and the other administration officials and faculty. And uh, Rick and Teresa Slavkovsky and their two daughters came in to greet me. They simply wanted to express gratitude for the house and to tell me what it had meant to them as their children had grown up over the years. Judah was not there because he was getting robed up with his fellow students. Well, we marched in, we had the program, I gave my commencement address, I went and sat down by the archbishop, and of course I'm sitting there waiting on Judah. <laughs> Finally, they called out his name. He comes across the stage. He shakes hands with the president. They give him his diploma. But instead of going back and sitting with it, his fellow students, like all the other students had done, he turned and came straight to me. He extended his hand and said simply to me, thank you for the house. And then he went back and took his seat. I've stayed in touch with Judah ever since. The next year he became a missionary in East Africa, he was working in a medical clinic uh, in, uh, in uh, Ethiopia. And he served for six months in Palestine. He came back and applied to medical school and was, a, uh, was chosen uh, to be a medical student at Harvard University on full scholarship, $59,000 a year. He's in the very top of his class. He's an outstanding person. And while we were having lunch with him, he shared with me his ambition. He wants to be a medical doctor and serve the poor. And he wants to have a positive impact on world health. I slept in his bed last week. I'll be in Boston in 10 days, and I'll have lunch with Judah again. He is my friend. His mother and father are my friends. What's that worth? A planned life can only be endured. But if you open yourself up to what God has for you, it changes the equation totally. And my experience has been that you're getting ready to experience true wealth, true joy, true happiness, and a peace that comes into your heart that passes all understanding.